Hey guys, good morning. It's Tony. Um, I did want to look a little bit into Tesla because I, I have been getting a lot of um, questions about whether or not Tesla is going to be coming back down a little bit and possibly filling the gap that started at 909. And, and has, I mean, it's a pretty big gap. It goes from 909 to 943. I have to think that's definitely a gap that's about like like 5% or so of the price right now. So it's a, it's a pretty big gap. Um, I actually thought it was going to fill it last, uh, you know, in early November, mid-November, when price was coming down, it actually ended up rebounding off of uh, 978 coming back up to, to resistance and then coming all the way back down. But look at that, right? You're, you're wicking basically right to the top of that gap. And I have no idea why price on, on, on Tesla does not want to fill that gap. Um, I, I do think that Tesla is coming back up though. I would say that maybe it's, it's, I would say that there's a strong chance that it fills the gap now. Um, if we're looking at the hour, it's definitely weakening on, on bullish momentum. I mean, it didn't actually break the highs of 1032 and it's already starting like it wants to retrace. I'm thinking that there's a chance that it actually goes down possibly to 884, but I'm definitely seeing it's probably going to fill the gap on 909. So I don't want to say I'm bearish. I'm definitely long-term bullish on Tesla. But I do think as of right now, it's going to go to 909 and fill that gap, even though pre-market is sitting at about $1,000.40. Um, everything is starting to look kind of, I don't want to say kind of bullish. Technically, you're still in a bear market on, on Tesla. Um, so it's one of those things right now where... It really just depends on where the spy goes. I think. I mean, I think because of the spy drop, that actually, I actually think spy is going to go down today, today or tomorrow. Um, but I think right now for Tesla, I think it's it's. I am actually bearish though. I, I do want to say that I I do think it's going to fill the gap at nine oh nine, and then if it does that, it'll probably wick down to eight eighty four. But if you look at the hour, right. Um, you're sort of midway on the stochastic, but you're looking at actually breaking uh, on 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 a bear cycle. You're gonna hit a new bear trigger, right? Possibly, maybe today, maybe today. Um, so I gotta say, it, oh, it actually closed. So you actually on the 30 minute, you actually closed the bear trigger right before, right at one o'clock, right when market closed yesterday. So I, I'm a little bit inclined to think that we're actually gonna drop down to around 909 to fill that gap. And then possibly either rebound from there, whoops, possibly either rebound back or go all the way down to previous support at 885. But it seems like we're going to be going down. And I think uh, and I think the best direction for us to take on this is if SPY is going to be going down, which it seems like it is. The 30 minute closes bearish. Um, it didn't actually break trend. It broke it a little bit. Um, so it broke trend, but then it came right back down. It didn't actually uh, you know, close a full candle above and then next to it, close like a bear candle and then close another bull candle. And then boom, you would have seen a, a big stretch to the upside, like a big move, right? So far right now, scenario one did not play out. Scenario two did not play out. Now we are scenario three, which is basically running from here up to trend and then all the way back down, which I think it might definitely happen today. I'm probably going to buy, I'm going to see where price is today. Um, but I think you know, if, if price is actually at 464 pre-market, I don't know if this is actually right. It's already, it already broke this downtrend, right? And if it did, then all bets are off. And, and, and I think that Tesla might just wick down to fill that gap and then come right back up. But again, Tesla, short-term bearish to 909, uh, if that, right? If SPY is actually moving hard to the upside, I think Tesla is going to move hard to the upside, to be honest. So really just depends on SPY movement. Um, I'll check on, I'm going to check pre-market Oops, give me a second. <coughs> Ugh. Jesus. Um, yeah, I think short term, I'm bearish um, on, on Tesla, possibly going back down to 909 or like 907 for that for that gap fill. But last time, right? Last time I didn't even fill it. Um, you know, last time you didn't fill that gap, right? You you basically you basically jumped from these levels of like 987 and then you rebounded. So you know, don't be surprised to see another rebound and 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 Tesla not filling that gap. It just seems like it doesn't. It, it, it's not. It doesn't easily want to fill this gap. So you know, don't be surprised to see. You know, this is. Don't be surprised for this to be the clear bottom, and then you're gonna run to 11:46. I would be a little bit less biased towards the bull side, and I would I would I would be I would weigh in a little bit more towards a 909 close or a 909 touch. Um, 
because of because of smaller time frames. But we gotta wait and see. We gotta wait and see. I think for now, I mean, I would probably just wait. If I was gonna buy in the Tesla, I wouldn't buy now. I would only buy into Tesla if it came back to previous support or fill that gap. Other, other otherwise, I wouldn't really buy Tesla. But I think as of right now, I think there's a strong chance that you maybe come back down to like these lows of like 950, 962, where it wicked down. I don't know if it's gonna fill the gap though, to be honest. I don't know. So I'd say I, I'd say I, I'm more bearish for it coming down here than than for it to actually just completely just rise up to 1,146, which is previous resistance, right? So I think if there's a strong chance that it probably comes back down here and then it just runs up, but we'll see. I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.